the compass de Fandango de Huelva. Is it in 3 beats, in 6 beats, in 12 beats, in 96 beats? This compass looks very simple, but it is actually much more complex than it looks, and it is very interesting. As always in flamenco, there are many different ways of thinking, of counting, of feeling this compass. Some of them are convenient, some are not, and some are even risky. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you sing flamenco, you dance, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just want to understand how it works, today let's talk about the Fandango de Huelva compass from a purely rhythmic perspective. We'll talk in detail about the cante, the toque, and the baile later. For today, it's only reason. There are basically three different ways of counting El Compas de Fandango de Huelva. There are people who count it in three beats, people who count it in six beats, and people who count it in 12 beats. And of course, there are also people who don't count at all. But if it works for them, good for them. But there are also people like me who, depending on the situation, will count more on three, on six, or on 12. Because in my opinion, Counting and understanding is not incompatible with feeling and having sonicete, okay? These two things are complementary. I explained in another video that a compass, in the sense of a rhythmic cycle, one compass must correspond to the minimum cycle that allows us to see its specific architecture, its personality, its identity. The minimum cycle to feel the internal dynamic, how it works, how it sets in motion, and what makes it fundamentally different from other compasses. Let's start with this because the basic identity of the Compass de Fandango de Huelva lies in this pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 All with a little contratiempo. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. The count is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with accents on 1, 4, and 5. 6 is silent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In the structure of this compass, two things are important. First, the ternary cycle. We have six beats with accents every three beats, like two, three beats Legos with the accents on the first beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three one. And the second important thing is like a micro closing, a little closing every time on four and five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. As I said before, you can mark the four and five. Four and five. One, two, three, four and five. One, two, three, four and five. And when there is a big closing, like a real remate, the cierre is in the same beat on five, but with a stronger intention of cierre, of closing. One, two, three. Take the good there are a thousand of variations to this, but this is the foundation on which we'll build all the rest. This is the minimum cycle we need to express the specificity of this compass. I just need to do this, or this, and that's enough to let you know that we are por Fandango de Huelva, or Sevillanas. But the difference between Fandango de Huelva and Sevillana is not in the compass itself, but we'll talk about that later, okay? Because we can't do everything in just one video. Yes, this compass is built on two Legos of three beats with the accent on the first beat. But we just explained that they don't have the same internal architecture, right? They are not symmetrical. The first one is one, two, three, and the second one is one, two. The third one here is silent. So we could use this Lego. I don't know if you know this Lego from before. It's more interesting to see this as a unit, as a six beats group that breathes in a certain way, that has a specific tension and resolution, question and answer. Tum, tum, pa, 
This is what makes this compass recognizable. If we think it and play it all the time in three, then we lose this asymmetrical character, and then we have just one, two, three, one, two, three, and nobody would know that it's a compass de Fandango de Huelva. Doing only this, you can just guess what is it? Is it Fandango de Huelva? Is it Sevillana? Is it a kind of burreria? Is it Campanieros? Is it a Jota? Is it a waltz? It doesn't mean that you can't never play in three beats. We can perfectly do this. But the whole identity, the whole personality of this compass lies in the asymmetrical six beat sequence. There is a reason why this compass is often counted and explained in 12 beats. It's because the basic harmonic cycle of the guitar, when we say play compass for Fandango de Huelva, needs two six beat compasses to complete. The Andalusian cadence that we unfold to play compass de Fandango de Huelva covers two six beat compasses, or 12 beats. <laughs> In other words, when we play Compass de Fandango de Huelva with the guitar, one harmonic cycle covers two rhythmic cycles. But this is when we play basic compass, because as soon as we leave basic compass and we enter in the cante or in falsetta, it becomes very confusing. Thinking in 12 beats for the cante, it can work for a very squared standard Fandango, but it's very risky. We'll talk more about this when we talk in detail about the Cante por Fandango de Huelva. I told you about the micro closings, right? So if we think in 12, somehow it forces us to have the first one like a soft closing and the second one a stronger cierre. This is what we hear most of the time in the solo compass audio tracks. And for me, this is very artificial and forced. Just let's take this example without entering in details, but can you feel the 12 beat here? No, right? If you play or sing on top of this 12 beats compass, it is very restrictive. And sooner or later, you'll be crossed in the compass. Because the tercios, the cante, the sung lines, or the melodic phrases of the guitar do not always fit on a 12 beat cycle. Sometimes they are longer than 12 beats, but shorter than 24 beats. So why make it even more complicated than what it already is, needing to add or rest medio compasses, half compasses? We already have this headache por burreria, but por burreria it is needed because it is the very essence of the compas de burreria, but not here. The baile also uses sequences of 12 beats because it uses pairs of 6 beats compasses. So with baile alone it could work, but again, baile with cante and baile with guitar, the baile should be able to adapt and not to be stuck in 12 beat cycles. There is also, I think, an attempt to match it with a solea type 12 beats compass that we usually know very well in flamenco because we use it for so many palos like solea, alegria, any kind of cantina, bulleria por solea, sometimes bulleria. So it's like an attempt to standardize, but for me it's very artificial. And if we want to do that, we need to start counting on 12. We can put it like this with the accent on the first beat of each Lego. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. So it kind of works because we have accents in common. The 12, the 3, the 6, and the 10, where the cierre is. But you see, it's not exactly the same, right? Because the 4 and the 9, they are not very important in Solea. But they are in Fandango. In Fandango de Huelva, 12 are just 6 plus 6. They are symmetrical. They have the same internal structure. So why do we want to standardize if precisely all the interest lies in the differences, in the personality, in the variety?
If with three beats we don't have enough to feel the personality of this compass, with 12 beats we have too many. Six is good. I think the six beats are more convenient and more practical to understand the cycle, the dynamic of the cycle, to respect its specific personality and to keep the rhythmic flexibility required by the cante and the toque. As I always say, the counts, the legos, the numbers are not music, okay? They are only tools that help us to better understand, better practice and better feel. But the main goal is always to dance, to play, to sing and to express ourselves freely, right? So at the end of the day, you can really count however you like. Just find the way that works for you or just not count at all but make sure that it works not only for you, but also with the others, also with the cante, with the guitar, with the percussionist, with everybody else. And make sure that you are always able to adapt to any possibility. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it could help. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, ask me any question you want about flamenco and go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it your own.